Thanks for listening to the Kojima Frequency. This week on the show, we have games reporter and critic for the Washington Post, Gene Park. And if you're enjoying the show and want to help support it, make sure to check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Kojima Freak. Hey, I'm Fingers. Yo, it's Apache Smash. Hey, everyone. This is Days Ahead. And I'm Nitroid. You're listening to the Kojima Frequency. All right, we made it. Episode 100 of the Kojima Frequency. And we got Gene Park on the show. Super honored to have you on the show, man. Uh, been been following you for a long time on Twitter. Just been loving your, your Metal Gear takes lately here. You've been, <laughs> you've been on a roll, so... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, happy to be here. Uh, I can't believe this is the 100th episode. I'm like nobody compared to uh, the, the the cast of character that, that, that this little podcast has been able to pull. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and delighted and, and very happy to be here on episode 100 of the Kojima Frequency, which I only just started listening to in the past couple of weeks again, because as you and Days and maybe some others have noticed, I've just been on, on real, real Kojima kick lately. And I can explain why, but yeah. <laughs> yes, please explain because... Okay. Yeah, take it away. It was such a coincidence. And yeah, I recently went to Philadelphia to get a friend of mine into Metal Gear. And then I happened to notice your tweet. So the coincidence is it blew my mind, but please continue. It's very, It feels very serendipitous, doesn't it? Um, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, first of all, I'm always in the mood for for Kojima and Metal Gear games, but really the 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 impetus of my my new my latest Kojima uh, sessions is that I just finished Alan Wake Two, right? And I just consider Alan mm-hmm. Wake Two my game of the year of 2023. And I always I've been telling people like it, I really feel like this is the closest thing we got to a Kojima game uh, of in 2023. You know. Um, in terms of the, the, the I, have you guys played it? I have not. I played their first one, but yeah, no, nope, not yet. Uh, yes, I'm very early in the game. I've played mm. it. It's pretty interesting that you say that because I've my assessment of 2023 is very similar, but also a little bit expanded there. Um, mm. It's a tough call between Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate for, for game sure. of the year for me. No argument here for Baldur's Gate 3. An incredible game. So <laughs> it, They appeal to two different sides of me. One is sort of like the power fantasy uh, mm. RPG KOTOR kid. And the other mm. one is sort of like the weirdo Kojima Tim and Eric style mm. gamer nerd. Um, that being said, both of them kind of like... Uh, tingled my kojima brain as i like to call it Mm. um kojima brain is when you kind of experiment with a title or you play a game and you notice something you know a little unique detail about the set or a unique mechanic and you think to yourself hey well you know can i can i try this and and will it work um and so you know you give it a shot and if it works then you know your kojima brain is delighted Mm. um i tend to not get that experience very much uh with triple a titles nowadays but Mm -hmm. i got that a lot Mm. with Baldur's gate which is why i tend to call it more of an immersive sim than a crpg Mm. um Mm -hmm. and then when it comes to alan wake 2 again you know just the the, you're right in that it's i i was initially skeptical about that assessment of it being the closest Mm -hmm. thing to kojima but so far i mean you're right it It pushes the medium in terms of its weirdness. So it tingles my Kojima brain in sort of like breaking that sort of meta uh, fourth wall and and pushing pushing the the limits of the medium to present this this weird but eccentric message. For sure. And so, you know, I I interviewed Sam Lake and, uh, you know, it got, got my brain started to go thinking about, you know, the auteur theory of video games, right? Um, and whether a video game, which is a product of uh, hundreds and hundreds of people, especially with games as big as uh, as the ones we're talking about, uh, still, it th- th- there is a director. And Alan Wake felt like such a product of Sam Lake. And I start to wonder, gosh, Kojima obviously is all over his games, but how different are Kojima games in terms of uh, his imprint versus Sam Lake. And so I decided to play Death Stranding because, you know, I, lo- I fucking love Death Stranding, you know. Oh, so- sorry if there's no cussing. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're straight. Yeah, cuss as much as you want. <laughs> oh, I love Death Stranding. Anyways, so I started to- and I had Death Stranding on PC. So I was like, I never finished Death Stranding on PC, the director's cut. So I started that and, 
you know, once you play Death Stranding, if you love Death Stranding, you're just going to keep going until until you make it all the way to Edgenaut City, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and then so I did that. And then I was like, I'm not done playing Kojima games. And then I was like, I still have the Metal Gear Master Collection. So I'll play that. And I, I finished those. And then I was like, I need to also finish Metal Gear 5 on PC. I never, I never finished that. I was in the middle of... I had beaten Sahelanthropus, so I was in the post Sahelanthropus world where you got to fight quiet and quiet's got to leave and then the, the blah, 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 the disease and blah, 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 all that stuff. So I finished all that um, and that's been fun. I, didn't, I haven't finished all the side ups, but, I, but I've, I've, again, I've been obsessed with playing Metal Gear 5. Um, again, to kind of feel like what the difference is between a Kojima game and a Sam Lake game. When, uh, and I think there's a huge difference. Um, Sam Lake is Sam Lake's imprint is all over the writing and the style and everything that has anything to do with the narrative and a presentation, right? Like, which is an important thing for a Kojima game. It's a huge part of why he's been, he's such an influential uh, director. But a Kojima game, you can feel, you can feel it in the gameplay, mm-hmm. you know, which is why I really want to go Death Stranding first because Death Stranding is probably the game that is just, that has the longest stretches of gameplay with no, with no storytelling. Yeah. You can feel it in the UI. You can feel it in the audio design. You can feel the, the you can feel it in the crispiness of of how the menus feel. The you know, yeah, yeah, I love that UI. Yeah, all of that stuff. And I'm just like, I I think that there's a huge difference between a Kojima game and games made by other people in that the qual the Kojima quality is in almost every single inch and crack uh, of a game that you can find. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it's very very consistent across across the games. You know. Yeah, just that level of detail with every little subsystem, and yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. I've I've said this before, but um, I feel like with Kojima games, it's it's like it's similar to your piggybacking off of your point. The experience, mm-hmm. it's sort of this white glove curated experience from the moment you get that sort of first trailer, that announcement mm-hmm. trailer, to the moment that you kind of see the end credits, and even a little bit beyond the end credits, right? Yeah. Um, and that's that's why, you know, despite some skepticism for OD, you know, my rule of thumb is always, you know, I will judge a Kojima game as soon as I see the end credits, yes. followed by the post credits, and then see the main menu again. <laughs> um, so And then give it a <laughs> couple some, months probably too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let it let it marinate. Yeah, you gotta chew on it. It's like an album. <laughs> right. It is like an album. Yeah. yeah. First time you might not like it, but then you go back, you're like, all right, I appreciate that though, you know? Let's exactly. And I've oh I I've I've every time I try to pitch Dust Stranding to people who don't like Dust Stranding, and if, if I know that they're music musically inclined, mm-hmm. I'm like, this is this is the closest thing to a concept album of a video game that we've ever had. And <laughs> and I, I love the band uh, Sigur Ross. I don't know if you guys know Sigur Ross. I love Sigur Ross, yeah. Exactly. So like I would tell my friends who also like Sigur Ross, I was like, this is a Sigur Ross album in a video game, guys. You need to play this, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's exactly how I felt too. I do need to go back and double dip for the uh, the director's cut. That's one thing I haven't gone back and done yet. I, I tried to like yeah. play it again with the PS5 controller, and I was just like, "Ow, this hurts my hands!" Like, <laughs> I had to put it down. Yeah, the PS5 controller does hurt my hands. So you know, I got the Steam Deck. So I, so I was I was really really you know okay. doing some damage on director's cut in the, in the Steam Deck. I, I did play. I did. I I gotten farther on PC than I did on on PS5. Mm-hmm. Um, I did. I did get a lot of the little bonus items, um, but. In the Steam Deck version now, I now have more stuff on PC than I ever got on PS4 or even PS5 because I know the game better. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. I know which I know which which careers to five star, so I can get Im- immediately the, the the three or four star gear that I need. So I, so I'm optimizing, even though it's, a, it's still a very very slow process, <laughs> yeah. but I'm still able to optimize uh, my, my route and my approach, and that's fun. I love that. Zipline King, nah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, zip, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? You, you say that I never actually fiddled around with the zipline system that much. You know, I, I I did it. It just seemed like a, yeah, it was just fast track. Like yeah, it just kind of defeated the whole point of all of the systems completely. <laughs> like once you set those up, but yeah. well, that and like once I started to think about like having to set up, and I was like, okay, well, I got to go back to the mountains again, and I really got to pick a spot that's three hundred meters away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to do. It was just like way more thinking than I really wanted to at the time. So I was like, you know what? I'll just brute force walking through the snow, and it's fine. Whatever. I did that, and it's really really boring. So I was like, you know what? I I, I think I'm gonna actually start a zipline network, and I did. So it's so I have a really really good zipline network that goes all over the all over the basically the main map of the game. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say mm-hmm. right? 
So, yeah, definitely on, on second playthroughs, too, though. That's just like, all right, time to save some time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I played Death Stranding again right after I finished it because I was like, I know I can do that better. You know, I know I can, I can, I can beat the game faster. Mm. And I, I play Metal Gear games and Kojima games like I play Resident Evil games. And I mm. like to optimize. You're in good company. <laughs> yeah, I like to optimize and like kind of like well, not really speed run. Even though I I think I am a fairly competent speed runner in Resident Evil games. Mm -hmm. I I'm not like I don't think I'd be competitive, but I I would be better than most. Um, and that's what I also try to do with Metal Gear too. Apache has entered the chat. <laughs> I think the replayability of both lends itself to that, and the fact that it gives you times at the end of the game. It literally mm -hmm. says to you, "Here's how fast you went," and you think you automatically think like. How can I play more efficiently next time? How can I how can I do that a bit better? And and that's something I've always loved about both games. Exactly. Or in your case, do I even need to use my eyes? <laughs> and also the fact that uh, the, the IGT doesn't count cutscenes, so I can watch Chief Irons get blown the fuck out by, by G1 <laughs> every time <laughs> and not lose time. That's also a positive, but I digress. For sure, yeah. I mean, fuck Chief Irons, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that Apache because I used to play the hell out of MGS2 that way, you know, because uh, MGS2 is such a nice and crispy linear experience. Um, and I started to play, when I started to play MGS2 this time around, I automatically went to holding up every single person and getting all the dog tags. And it wasn't until I was in strut whatever B or whatever where I was like what am I doing I, I've, I've already done this like three times in my life already before <laughs> I don't necessarily think I need to do this and it's not super fun you know so it was fun when I did it but then you, because you got that sense of accomplishment and that accomplishment happened decades ago so yeah good. you got the cool wigs which are pretty much useless but but yeah cool oh yeah um, I forgot that there's wigs yeah <laughs> I, I like how the uh if when you hold up the guards in MGS2 if you just leave the gun on the on the head they'll just dance forever mm -hmm. oh my god did you I actually found out something about MGS2 that I never knew until I played until this, this this latest run I did not know that you can press L3 to make Snake lower his gun that's because um that's a map in for the master collection Okay. It, it's changed the uh, layout because in on the PlayStation Two, it would use the pressure sensitivity to lower your gun, so oh, you would take your finger off it sl uh, that's slowly. That's why. To, yeah. Okay. So See, that's, 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 that's why that's I'm like glad a, I'm on this podcast. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, because because they were pressure sensitive, and I missed that. You know. But yeah, it's a it, it's a it's a okay remapping. I really wish they hadn't put it on the button they did, but. It, I've gone on about that too much on this on this podcast. Oh, okay, so okay. I need to I need to find those. It, it, it feels awkward. I don't like it. I, it is kind of a good time to talk about, like I guess, the master collection. You know, like I, I saw you were you were pretty disappointed in in the the current state of it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. didn't really. Yeah, I mean, the Switch version. As soon as I booted up NGS one, the audio started skipping like crazy. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, there's your there's your problem playing on on the, the Switch. The Switch version exactly. is definitely the the worst of the bunch. But uh, I mean, did you did you notice that the same kind of experience on PS five or was that I haven't played it on PS5. I, I'm, I've been I always playing on PC. Okay, um, but also you know MGS2 and three are completely borked on Steam Deck, which mm -hmm. was the whole point of the whole point of me wanting yeah. to play it on PC. So that was annoying, um, and I hope it gets fixed soon. But you know they obviously just ported the HD collection onto a thing and then said, okay, well L3 is the button to lower the but the, the the gun now, and that's it. You know, it almost feels on. egregious, right? When you plug it in and you see that HD collection. Uh, like splash screen, loading screen. Yeah, it pull it pulls me out so much because <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's 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 the same collection that I had on the Xbox 360. I was like, that's that sucks, you know. It has the same like copyright date, you know. Yeah, I mean they they are going in and you know patching stuff. They just had that one patch uh, that dropped a couple days ago on on they console. Did. I think that dropped on PC a little while ago. But mm -hmm. you know they they finally fixed that smoothing option. You can turn that on and off. So everybody that you know, I mean it, it was mm -hmm. looking like shit with the smoothing on. Um, they have the the like aspect you know like pixel perfect sixteen by nine options now. They have a CRT filter. So hopefully. Mm -hmm. This this shit does get ironed out. I mean that, that that I've always been saying with this whole project, it's like that's a game that's like it's a big scope. You know, it's so many games in that collection that you know you've got mm -hmm. to to worry about and bug out. And um, my big thing is the audio is fucked up. Like when you scroll through the codec sounds and stuff, it just it sounds awful. Mm -hmm. So until they fix that, I'm, I'm not super happy. But it, it's just good to see that they are actively patching it and trying to iron out some of these issues. 
Yeah. So hopefully they get it workable on, on Steam Deck here soon. I, I think there is like a mod to make that happen, but we shouldn't be having to do that. I mean, that's that's the big problem here. Like the mods no, no, are saving should, the day, it, but at the end of the day, we're just like, ah, come on, Konami. <laughs> you, it shouldn't be up to the customers to fix exactly. a broken product that they bought, you know. Um, yeah. And the, and, the, and the cover is ugly too. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's yeah, it's fucking horrible. MGS MGS is a series known for some of the some of the hottest c- covers. You know, Metal Gear Solid One, all white. MGS Two with the with the orange. I actually have a framed copy of MGS Two on my wall. Nice. Um, and Metal Gear Solid Three with the with the cool, you know, snake back with his treated with back to the tree. You know. Yeah. I have a sign. I have a signed copy of that one with uh, Kojima and Yoji Shinkawa too. So. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Give it me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that just came out. Um, what did you say? I, I said, "Give it to me." <laughs> uh, something I loved with the old covers is different regions would get different ones. Um, mm. Recently, I love Japanese MGS2 cover. I have that in my living room, just hanging no, on my bookshelf. Oh yeah, what a, what did it look like? Nothing beats Korean Sons of Liberty. Like that case goes so hard. The Korean Sons of Liberty. Wait a minute. Uh, Korean uh, substance, even. Which is like the, the the best version. So they had like a uh, a subtitled version that released only oh. in Korea, and it had its own yeah. cover. Oh yeah, these are great. Oh my god, and you've got those right, Apache, don't you? <laughs> like you've got like a whole bag. You did that on stream. You're like my favorite version of MGS two, and then you just yeah, like, pull like, out like thirteen different what? versions. And you're just... well, Nitro treated me, and he, and he was like, "How many MGS two copies do you have access to?" Because I was in a place with a bunch of uh, Metal Gear speedrunners, we're all together in one house. So I got like 30 copies all together and just went through <laughs> That was the all. only way you were going to beat my 18 copies. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you want to see a cool, uh, another cool uh, cover variant, look up the Stockholders edition of MGS3. Mm. That one, that one's rad looking. It's basically the same as the US cover, but it's in green. So the camo effect actually sort of works and he sort of blends into the tree. Oh yeah, that does look. Yeah, you can barely see That's his outline cool. there. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, it pops out way more on the original. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, fingers. Is that a Yoji Shinkawa uh, p- profile picture that you always use? <laughs> no, uh, it's it's inspired by Yoji for sure. Uh, we sure. we all had um, art done by Century Wizard. Um, he mm. he definitely leans into the Yoji style, but uh, nice. Yeah, he did a great job on that. Shout out Century Wizard. Yeah. I also want to shout out to Cindy Harrell in the audience, too. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. I just noticed your message in chat. I can't wait to see you next week. <laughs> Cynthia is awesome. Yeah. Obviously, big fan. We're all, we're all big fans, listeners, and, and, and the hosts here. So. Yeah. Um, one thing I saw you post recently, you, you kind of you did a little tier list kind of of, uh, of Metal Gear. And you, you definitely yeah. had MGS2 up at the top. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember you, you were kind of saying that, like, one, three, and five were kind of interchangeable for you know second best, uh, mm-hmm. and then you know you had MGS four down at the bottom, which Nitro appreciates. Um, Always, yeah. <laughs> and I don't hate MGS four, but <laughs> you know, for, uh, I, I feel I feel like I'm, I'm, what else is there to say about the pro- it's, it's issues, right? So, I mean, I want to hear it. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, just, just, just Act Three. You know, that's like, like when, when I think about why I don't, I dislike MGS Four. I just wish Act Three was something else. Uh, chapter Three. Yeah. Um the, the the tailing mission sucks, right? It it's so interesting the first time you do it because it's so different from the rest of the game. Um, sure. And yeah, what's wild about it is that's the chapter that Shinta Nojiri had control over. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that was basically his design, and and you know his work on on Ghost Babble and the Acid games. I've always thought was phenomenal. He's always kind of willing to go into the weird areas. Yeah, and it's not a bad stealth section, but just like I don't know, there's just there's not there's just not a lot of options there, yeah. and it's actually not even that long. So you know, I mean, that's the issue. Like, I don't know. Do- on repeat playthroughs, it's just a slog. Yeah, yeah. You're right. That I remember the first time I played it, I didn't. I wasn't like this is the worst thing I ever played. But it, it wasn't until replays where I was like, I actually dislike this entire portion whatsoever. Yeah. Um, I liked the, the 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 chase scene afterwards. I thought it was cool. I, I I I. It's obviously inferior to the one at the end of MGS3, um, but it's still fun and uh, the visuals are amazing. And and I I don't hate the Raven fight as much as uh, other other folks do. I thought I thought it was okay. So so. Stop me if you've heard this, but there was actually a, a, a major part of that chapter uh, cut out during yeah. development. 
Yeah, it was supposed to be an escort mission too, right? <laughs> yeah, that's like you you're taking like three sections of gameplay that I generally do not like conceptually and putting them all together <laughs> yeah, a tailing mission an escort mission and an on the rails uh uh, uh right shootout, you know? oh my goodness <laughs> and something should have just happened to like a local water tower so it just became like an underwater level two and just said oh Fuck god it. And just, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah there, yeah. there then, probably would have been swimming too yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah the underwater uh, the, the, the underwater ride in section in mgs2 right yeah. <laughs> uh you got emma on your back too for some reason oh, for no reason god. whatsoever <laughs> um and then the greatest cutscene that's ever been constructed in the history of humankind uh, follows immediately afterwards. So you know, it's that's why I don't I don't hate or even dislike MGS4. I I, I wish I could still play it right, right now, which is why I bought it on PS PS3, and I'm looking. I'm my PS3 is buried underneath a whole bunch of shit, but okay. I'm 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 going to unearth it, plug it in, and just revisit MGS4 uh, yeah. finally again. You know that. Not to go into trivia mode again, but that cutscene is one of the few in the game that's actually pre-rendered. Mm, I did not know that. Yeah, there are, there are a few in the game that are uh, just video files. Mm. They're not actually. I mean, obviously they were made in engine, but for some reason or sure. another, they pre-rendered them for the for the game. I, I guess I do remember it being a little bit blurrier than than usual. Yeah. yeah. And then, like chapter four rolls in, and then you know what I, st- I like I've grown to appreciate the fact that chapter four, uh, you know, spoiler alert, uh, when you revisit Shadow Moses, I've grown to appreci- appreciate the decision to not full- fill it with soldiers again. You know, um, yeah, I understand what he was going for, but at the same time, you know, uh, I wish I still had that as a pl- as a play area. So that that's still a little bit disappointing, which is why I love MGS five so much. Uh, because MGS5 is a game where he's like, okay, well, you want to play around and do stealth? Well, here's a whole two maps. Uh, just never be game over. Just play forever. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Act, Act 4 in MGS4 is very, uh, you can never go home again. Yeah. That's that's exactly why, why I've grown to appreciate it. Because I did not understand that message again. You know, it's like until I've gotten older. And then when I did go home and I was like, oh, this is what he was trying to say about Shadow Moses. Okay. Because <laughs> you know? I'm always thinking about Kojima in, in that sense, you know. But yeah, and then there's chapter five, which is, you know, still great too. So I don't know. It's, it's mostly just chapter three. Five is the one that befuddles me on so many levels. Mm. It just, it, it's sort of confusing to sort of draw out what, what's going on in that chapter. Each, each one is, is sort of this, this uh, time capsule of, of different qualities from different games that are sort of sure, mixed yeah. together. It's really interesting. And then five just sort of blows everything out a bit. Yeah, because five has such like a weird structure, you know. Yeah. Um, and there and there's even less gameplay in, in chapter five than there is in right, chapter right. three or four. So that was also disappointing. But we're finally on Arsenal gear, and then the game is finally kind of re- returning to that mood of like you know the techno steel uh, stages and and you know the the cool. Uh, it's awesome looking rhythm section going and everything, you know, with the music. Yeah. yeah, it's what for like one section. It's for one area. Yeah, it's very very intense area, but yeah, yeah, and it's kind of BS too. Like all the enemies are a little bit BS, and then there's what, and then there's Walker gears at the end, and then you fight uh, you know Psychomantis two, and then for some reason Psychomantis one shows up, <laughs> and then and then yeah, and then everything everything else happens afterwards, uh, which is still incredible. Which is why like I I've I've been super nostalgic for for MGS four because uh, again like I've been on a Kojima Kojima fest in the past few weeks, but MGS four again for and obviously for a lot of people is the only one that is just stuck in PS three and just haven't been able to play it since then. That Rex and Ray fight, I mean, you can't beat that though. Like for sure, no, you can. No, you can't. Like when you when you get control of that thing, you're just like, yes. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. For me personally, that was a true hype moment. Exactly. I mean, I hate it so much. <laughs> yeah, I hate no. it so much. <laughs> I hate it so, for 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 a start. Why is it not the Marines Ray? If it's fan service, right? Why is it not the mm-hmm. Marines Ray? Second, how does Rex win? Why? Why does Rex win? Yeah, because it's not the genes that matter. <laughs> How does Liquid lose? Like Ray was designed to be better than Rex, right? Yeah, and Liquid is a. It's supposed to be like washing machines, Apache. You got the old ones that still work after <laughs> fifty years, and you got the new shit like my Kenmore that breaks they after. They don't build them like they used to, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
No, it's 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 basically the liquid solid argument. I was being facetious, Gene. I promise. I mean, th- 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 that perspective is probably right in that you know we're always saying like, oh, the iPhone this is better than the iPhone, the old iPhone, and then we, we realize like the old iPhone is actually doing just fine, and you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, so it might have been just been marketing hype that the Metal Gear Ray was supposed to be the the Rex killer, you know, ah. and really it's just it's just the one that swims in the water. That's it. You know? <laughs> Which is beautiful. It's a beautiful machine. You make a good point, Gene. You make you make a good point there. I'll, 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 I actually accept that argument. Yeah. Right, right. This is that, marketing that, hype. That is exactly. I was I was like it was just it was just it was just an ad for, for Metal Gear Ray. The whole, the whole the tanker when uh, the Scott Dolph's doing his speech, we're just being like advertised to. It's like, just stocks going up. Just all bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but oh my god, dude! Like the minute that you that you hop into Rex, I was like, oh wow, we're we're really really doing this. This game is really really going there, you know? Yeah. And then when Ray pops out, you're just like, I just couldn't believe. Like my my hype levels were absolutely absolutely obscene at that point for sure. Mm-hmm. For me, it's in Act Five and the final fight when the health bars change for each Ooh, phase yeah. with the music. Hmm. Yeah, that's another one. You're literally beating the liquid out of Ocelot, <laughs> and it shows in the music and his mood and literally the UI and kind of going back to pushing the medium there. Mm-hmm. And the, Yeah, exactly. The music and then the way, yeah, it's, it's it, it, to, to, make, to use UI as storytelling, you know, like you can't, the only way you can properly assess what's going on in that fight is when you understand what's going on with the UI, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay, weird question because I don't even have an answer to this, and I, I, or at least not on the top of my head right now. But what? And Nitrate, if you've said this before on this podcast, I do apologize for not remembering eighty episodes ago. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I say a lot of shit. So, so what is your interpretation of if you die in Act Five at any point, you get the game over screen, and instead of it being continue and exit, it's continue and exist. And if you click exist. Liquid Ocelot says some shit like how it's not over yet and, you know, this, the game kind of trolls you in a way. Like, from the perspective of kind of pushing the medium, what do you convey that message as? Like, what, how do you interpret that? I'm just curious. Since you're, in a, I mean, since you're on an MGS4 kick now. I have no interpretation. I, I forgot that that happened. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> For sure. So I, I forgot that that happened. I, I, yeah, I wish, again, this is why I wish I could play MGS4 because there are so many, so many little details. Uh, the, only, the only way I've been able to re-experience MGS4 in recent years is just watching the cutscenes, which sucks. You know, uh, yeah. these are video games. You should be playing them. So Hopefully we can maybe get it in some way on the uh, modern consoles. With, you know, with volume one being out volume there. Two? Volume two is... Yeah, volume you know, two. You know, yeah. please. It has please. to be right. It, it, ha- it they, they can't even sell a volume two if it's not MGS4. It doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, if it's just the Peace Walker and MGSV bundle, yeah. it's like, oh, damn it. Like, <laughs> that, that would completely de- de- defeat the whole project of why MGS4 exists to, to, to mm-hmm. this, 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 this unequivocal uh, dedication to answer every, every single question that MGS2 and MGS1 raised, right? Yeah. Um, to, to a fault, maybe, but, you know, still, it's, uh, the, 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 that, that is, it felt like the goal of the project, and it felt good, too. It's, it's fine. I, liked, I didn't mind that he continued the MGS2 story, mm-hmm. um, even if, you know, the whole explanation on ARM was, is still something... <laughs> <laughs> I can't really. Oh, it's hor- awful, <laughs> horrendous. Yeah, the arm oh, shit was. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, the, he made it all up. The, the, the everything about the arm, everything about Liquid's arm is still something that I, I have a hard time, you know, just accepting. You know, um, it it didn't need an explanation. Yeah, <laughs> I've been playing through the series with my girlfriend slowly, and you know, we've we've beaten MGS three, we we played Ground Zeroes, we beat mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid one, but we just we started MGS two recently, and when the Liquid Arm stuff showed up, that's the first time she went, "Wait, what the fuck?" Like, <laughs> you know, that's like the one drunk. She's like, "All right, hold on, wait, this is what's going on here." That's so. the one that 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 made him made her go, yeah, but because it it is absolutely the weirdest aspect of the entire saga, I think. Right? Yeah. What did you think? Right? Yeah, she's like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't follow here. Like, I had to kind of like, you know, I had to stop for, you know, because the rest of the stuff, you know, it's like, oh, okay, I'm a guy with bees around me. She's like, okay, weird, I get it. But yeah, the, when all of a sudden Liquid's talking in through his arm, she's like, all right, hold on, what's going on here? <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, when Volgan is doing Kurabara, Kurabara, you're like, okay, he's just a weirdo and he's he's a little bit of a freak, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
and then MGS one oh ground zeros is like super normal and dark. Um and then yeah, <laughs> once you hit MGS two, it's like it just it's just bonkers. I God man, I will never forget the experience of playing MGS two. Um do you mind if I tell that story right here? Yeah, man. Go, go ahead. for it. Go for it. Uh, I had two roommates, and they were uh, both in like the, the in college, right? And they were both in the ROTC, so big military bros. They, they and they definitely uh, wanted to sign up after nine eleven happened. You know the, those kind of guys. Yeah. Um, and they were huge fans of Metal Gear Solid One because they loved the military aspect of it, just the military poor, the, the 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 fetishistic uh, uh, aspect of Kojima's uh, uh, <laughs> fascination with the military. Beating MGS one and be like, I'm going in the military. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I want to be. A, I want to be. A, 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 I want to be SEAL, SEAL Team Six, which is basically what Solid, you know, IRL Solid Snake, right? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, definitely. And then it wasn't even me that bought MGS two. It was it was one of those one of those guys, and he brought it home and he started playing it, and we we we, we wore the hell out of the tanker uh, disc in Zone End or Second Runner, right? Mm-hmm. So we were having a lot of fun playing the tanker mission, and then he had he had to go to class, and then we finished the tanker mission, and he was like, "Okay, well here here you go." He passed the control over to me, and he was like, "Don't get too far though, and make sure you have a different save." Blah blah blah. <laughs> I was like, "Cool," and then he went to class, and I came back, and I'm on like strut B, and I'm playing as Raiden, and I'm like climbing the ladder, and I'm I'm finding the vampire. Uh, and he was like, what the, I was like, I told you not to go too far. What the hell is this? <laughs> Who the hell is that guy? <laughs> Who the hell you is know? that guy? <laughs> <laughs> on, on the screen. And I looked back at him and I was like, I don't, like Roland, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not that far. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm that far actually, but I'm just saying that this game, I'm not sure if this game is not, is what you think it is. And so he, so I started over and, and, and then, yeah, we were all just befuddled by Raiden, the decision for Raiden. And then we just marathoned the whole game and then, and then beat the game and we saw the ending right yeah and we were all very very stoned oh and dude yeah that's like i think all of us were really stoned when we played through that and just like it was for me it was like 4 a.m at a buddy's house and like colonel mm-hmm. was doing all that freaky ai shit we're just we were looking at each other like considering turning the game off like i don't know man is that is that what he wants us to do right now like so yeah that comes with it man yeah i remember my, my buddy Br- brandon was like i'm scared <laughs> 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 so I, I was 10, so I wasn't stoned out of my mind, but I was equally tripped out, I would say, by the end. <laughs> yeah, we were in yeah. college this is in 2001, so I was like 20 years old. <laughs> I, I, I was I was 9 or 10, and mm. the thing that got me is my, my biggest fear growing up was always like, not just like, not not even like like AI or robots in particular, just l- literally video games. Like the 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 opening screen on Street Fighter Two when Ryu is about to you know fucking uh, Hadouken your ass. Yeah. Oh yeah, Hadouken and the screen, like, yeah. like that always scared me because I like well, I was like one day that's actually going to go out of the TV and get me. So yeah. things like Psycho Mantis and the mm. AI Colonel as a kid, uh uh-uh, uh, that stuck with me for way too long. Wow, that is a very very specific fear and. <laughs> Kojima made made it to <laughs> cater yeah. to that very very specific fear. That's awesome. It's strange how like somebody who catered to that very specific fear is really appealing to me now. It's sort of like how Resident Evil like that used to keep me up as a kid, and now I watch streams to go to sleep to it. So mm. <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, we beat MGS two, and I thought it was all nonsense. You know, uh, I, I, I'm not going to claim to be smart and be like, oh, I, I see what he's going here. You know, I. Yeah. I I thought I thought it was nonsense for the longest time, and it was. I, I think it was about un, un, until not until a year or two later where I really started to kind of internalize what he was saying. Um, and then once social media is, and once MySpace started happening, I was like, I think I get his point now, because um, I was really really on MySpace early, mm-hmm. and it was like. So for folks who don't know, I work at the Washington Post, right? I'm a reporter, but. Uh, the whole reason why I got hired at the Washington Post is because I'm actually a social media professional. I'm I'm really good at, at, at social media promotion, you know, being a community manager, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, and so and a lot of that was because I started on many, many different social media uh, platforms very, very early. And I really, really want, was deeply, deeply interested in how they affect us, how they affect our brains, how it's changing society. And that was really, really when 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 MGS two started to click with me, and I was like, "Oh my god, he really, really was on something." Mm-hmm. <laughs> when he when he was when he's calling this, um, I I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it seems like every time I play through it, like it's just you know it's more and more poignant. Like it's just you know it's right there, it's just nailing it. <laughs> it's like, well, we're here now. Like we've we've been here for a while. So 
Yeah, and it's always it's fun to see other people like you know you guys have Max Derrett on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's always fun to see people react to his video. You know, the most most profound game and moment in gaming yeah. history. Yeah, yeah, which is such a good you know such a good uh, title. And I don't I'm not even sure if it's entirely clickbait either. I love it. Yeah, it's tricky to sort of objectively critique these games when they come out too. I mean, even even given your background and your experience, you know, it it's it took a while for MGS two to click. Mm-hmm. It it really did. It really did. And you know, in a wider sense, it's only been. You know, when MGS2 came out, a lot of people don't remember this, but, you know, it it reviewed very well. But the general opinion was, well, the story's kind of nonsense, doesn't really make any sense. It's a step back mm-hmm. from MGS1. We don't really like what like the, the general opinion was that the story was not good and it mm-hmm. was very, you know, it was full of preachy nonsense. And it's sort of a modern phenomena uh, that this game is so revered. Like this is somewhat mm-hmm. recent that it's that it's being, you know, sort of exalted now. So with with the newer game like Death Stranding, you know, it's it's I'll look at it and maybe there's something that doesn't quite click with me. And I have to kind of stop and go, well, am I going to think this five years from now? Mm. Like, do do I need to come back and reassess this later? Mm. Uh, I, I've never I, I'm always second guessing what I think about these games in large part because MGS2 uh, sort of. It, it took it took a while for everybody to digest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right in that in that the way I thought about MGS2 and the way I d- I tried to I, I I thought about MGS2 immediately afterwards and and how I felt about it earlier it definitely informed how I it's, this is why I call Metal Gear Solid 2 the most influential game and probably the most influential piece of art uh, in my life period um, because it really really helped me uh, kind of come to terms with with, with my own self uh, I am someone who has always been obsessed with legacy and like what we leave behind on the planet mm. um because i'm always thinking about you, you know what's really triggering for me museums um i hate seeing mummies and bones of ancient humans and i'm just like is that all we leave behind as 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 conscious spirits and that's always been such an existential like problem for me yeah and mgs2 really really helped kind of clarify a lot a lot of things and Kind of eased me uh, in a lot of ways, and and made me feel a little bit more at peace with, I guess, existing, right? And mm-hmm. and uh, that that's such an important, that, that, you know, like 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 what else more could, could you want from a piece of art, you know? Right. Yeah. And and Metal Gear more largely is very much about like you know, who are we? What makes mm-hmm. us who we are? And what do we pass on? So I mean, that's that's sort of the larger overarching theme mm-hmm. of the series. Exactly. That, that that it's why the that the themes of mean and scene and and everything and gene, which is one, which means a, a lot hey. to me because that's my <laughs> name, right? Uh, yeah. Which is why I always say that Gene is actually my Kojima name because I say I always want to introduce myself as a Kojima character, yeah. where I say my name. <laughs> I'm going to say it in a Troy Baker voice too, of course, because it's Higgs, right? My name is Gene, the building block of all of life. Yeah. <laughs> and like and you're a writer, so that makes you a creative Gene. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, the selfish gene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, you know that, that's exactly what me- the Metal Gear games are about. They're 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 just fundamentally about identity and and who you are. You know? Gene, when I log on to GS two and I see you as one of the people I ship to, I'm gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> that motherfucker made it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. That's what Kojima's celebrity hangouts are really all about. He's scanning every single one of them. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, that, that, so, so, if you guys don't know, I've actually interviewed Kojima uh, oh, yeah. yes. when the, yep. when Death Stranding launched, and I will tell you guys, I've never been nervous for any, interviewing anybody. I've I've met presidents before, met many, <laughs> many important people. Um, Hideo Kojima is the only person that I was actually genuinely nervous for. You can ask my video editor at the time; he, he was like, "You are sweating. I've never seen you like this." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, yeah, because I am freaking out right now. This is you have no idea. I never knew I would get I would get to this point. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not ready. And we had a great time. Um, I um I've never interviewed him, but I did get to meet him outside of like one on one. I got to meet him, and mm. yeah, I was I was shaking. Yeah, yeah. And then so and if you don't know, I had cancer. Uh, I guess like, it's two years ago now, which is whew, I can't believe that. But while I was sick, um, could you actually email me? Wow. Um, and he that is awesome. Me. Oh my God. Yeah. He actually emailed me out of the blue and he said, 
uh, well, he he sent me a photo. Of, and I'll tell you what day this was. It's really funny. But he sent me a photo of himself uh, with, his, with his thumbs up, of course, and uh, my article of Death Stranding on, on, on the screen. Mm-hmm. And his note basically said, you know, Gene, I really hope you get better soon. And I really, really, really enjoyed our conversation. And I can't wait to talk to you again for my next projects. Oh, wow. I was like, man, I can't believe that's like, that is fantastic. Class act. That's amazing, man. It's warm my heart. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was really, really in, in like the weeds of like being super sick at the time. So yeah. when that happened, I was like super emotional. I act, I remember, I distinctly remember that when I when I saw that email pop up and I read it, I fell to my knees and started crying. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, and that is the reason why it helped for me. Because I, I've been de- I've been a fairly depressed individual, um, mm. you know. If you couldn't tell, it, it, with, with with how much I worry about, you know, the, the nature of existence and everything. But it it impressed upon me that I've built a life that I can't leave yet, you know. Because if Kojima just emailing me and wishing me well, <laughs> like I need to, I need to, I need to keep this life going as much as I can because this is this is a pretty cool life, you know. You got work to do. <laughs> Keep on keeping on. Yeah, I, I I got a lot of work to do. I got I got to interview again. You know. Yeah. Now one of the uh, one of the quotes from that article too that really you know stuck out to me. You know, he said that uh, are we creating connections through separate online personas with masks rather than our actualized selves? And just that story mm-hmm. that you just told right now. You know that a lot of the connections and stuff you know we have with people it's kind of you know surface level or whatever. But that sounds like Kojima. You know, really cared and reached out out of nowhere. You know, to to mm-hmm. to make sure just hey, I, I want to make sure you're. You know, you're doing okay and ho- hopefully you get better and stuff. That's mm, that's, that's our a, strand, man. That's yeah. our strand. You know, the Kojima and I made him. I was about to say that's that's some true strands right there, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's a true strand strand with, with the with the strand god right there, you know. <laughs> strand god. Love to hear it, man. That that, that that made me happy. I have a question. We got a question in chat about how is Lyco Dragon infinite wealth. Unfortunately I can't talk about it. But <laughs> <laughs> He said I need to know. You can't ask that. But if you know my history with the with the, with the Yakuza series, you, you can probably figure out what my opinion might be. So shout out Daily D's <laughs> you know, with the important <laughs> questions. Uh, yeah, Respect man. you taking the shot. <laughs> But yeah, looking forward to more articles uh, with Kojima from you because yeah, you have a way of just like tapping in. Um, I, you know, the more you listen to our podcast, maybe you might hear our our kind of disdain for game journalism as a whole and just kind of the state that it's mm. in, which is the the clickbait bullshit and the hey, there's mm. a rumor over here. Why doesn't everybody click on? Oh, it's un- unsubstantiated, so it doesn't matter anyway. You know, it's just this cash driven product here. We're, we're yeah, yeah, a certain subsect of mm. it. We're not super you know we're, we're not big fans of that sector of it but you know that's that's one thing where i think you stand far apart from any of these you know either companies or just individuals is mm-hmm. like you know if gene's tweeting about it i, I can kind of trust that it's like his real take you know and it's it's not you know driven by that that clickbait nature where you're just popping off and saying some random shit just to get some clout you know that's it's such a big thing that's going on right now so i don't know yeah, you, I, you really stand apart from that and we, we really appreciate you uh, yeah, as as one of the good game journalists out there, you know? I've surrounded myself with cloud chasers. I live in Washington D.C., so I live in a, a town full of cloud chasers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, honey, I grew up there. I get it. <laughs> like I had to get the fuck out. Like, <laughs> yeah. One of Sorry. the first one of the first nights out at a bar was when because I, I you know because I used to be a heavy drinker and I wanted to really find my local bar right. Yeah. I was at a bar and I heard this this this, this woman leave angrily, and then the the guy yelled at her. You know where I work? I work at the White House. Oh, and I'm just like, geez. I should never have moved here, probably. Oh, <laughs> that, that Nova energy. That Nova energy. It's giving me psychic damage, Gene. Oh, God. It's, it's, it's so crazy. I've been living here for eight years, so yeah, it's crazy. So I, 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 so I recognize uh, how clout chasers sound, and I, I, I do my best to avoid sounding like that. But also, I, I appreciate what you said about, you know, uh, no clickbait and that, that I don't do that because it, that's very intentional. Um, oh, yeah. You know, and it helps that I work at a place like the Washington Post that's very, you know, reputable and, and uh, gives me gives me the, sp- the space and time to, you know, create something else that's a little bit more different than, oh, this is, here's what the rumors are today or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, you know, to, to the point of the Patriots and Snake, I don't want to write content for algorithms, you know. I want to write it for humans. That's it. Yeah. 
that that does seem like the big difference there is that you know you're 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 a human through all of this like you know a yeah. lot of these things just this seem so like just knee jerk reaction like oh we heard a rumor and it's we're gonna put it out there and just you know we have nothing more to offer except we're not gonna tell you our source and it's just like well why would you say that <laughs> like, exactly exactly and then so 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 you know there's this whole debate about whether AI can re- replace reporters if as long as you write as a human then the, AI, the 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 machines will never replace you so just write as a human stop so, you know, I, I don't I I can't tell people to stop doing it because you know. Their, that's their business and that's how they do business and yeah. I, I understand the, the realities of, of how, I very deeply understand the realities of, of what it is to, to, to kind of make things pop in, 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 the, in, the, in the current media ecosystem mm-hmm. going back to MGS too <laughs> I, I do consider it a privilege uh, to be able to not have to participate in any of that yeah you know? yeah I mean they're, they're paying the bills at the end of the day you know they're getting the ad sure. like, so we, we yeah we all get it but like the thing is like everybody's privy to it now and like everybody just mm-hmm. but there's so many people that participate in it too and that's the sad mm-hmm. part like even yeah. calling it out being like hey this is bullshit it's like well you're boosting their engagement and their reach at that point so god damn it this can we not <laughs> like mm-hmm. Just, mm-hmm. just can we mute that channel please like can we mute mm-hmm. that account damn i'll tell you the worst part about sort of the the rising ubiquitousness of, of ai is that now anytime i look at something online there's a split second where i have to sort of stop and look yep. at it and go, okay, is this, is this fake? Is this, is this generated or is this like, was there a person behind it? Mm. And That's I awful. hate that because it makes it impossible to kind of enjoy anything, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially art. That's one thing with hard drive recently. Like apparently they, you know, or I'll just say allegedly, I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble, but they, uh, allegedly let off a ton of their old employees and mm-hmm. you know after they had tried to do like hey let's do a patreon to support the business and now it's you know pretty much just a guy up there maybe using ai to write some of the articles and now they have a patreon under the guise of hey all these old writers are still under our belt when they they left a long time ago so it's just yeah seeing things in the state that they are yeah, leading leading know. towards ai it's like ugh, like i guess an ai can write a hard drive article really you know well even yeah. there it's it's their word against someone else's word so how can you really know too yeah, yeah and, and and it's funny to hear all this uh discourse about ai because honestly and, and you know uh, it's funny and we promoted before so i'm not even saying like a secret of the company mm. uh but the washington post uses ai for it to write articles sometimes um, oh, everybody does now I'm, my up. job is starting to experiment with it too yeah, same. Yeah, it's 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 a sports section. Um, when uh, when there are games, uh, you don't you know it's it, it helps to not have uh, to to use a whole body human being to go to the to go to a, like a local high school game and re- report it. Yeah, I can just analyze stats and crank out whatever yeah. the turnout was with a little bit of flavor text, and there you go. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah. My local yeah. radio station will occasionally have a little ad blurb that's like, "This program was partially created using AI." Yeah, I'm like. Dude. No kidding! Oh, no. Wow, I haven't, I haven't heard that. Yeah, that sucks. No kidding! That's crazy. Yeah, and I'm wow. and I'm thinking like, what are you even doing? I mean, the the real threat we're seeing right now is is in the art section. You know, where where you've got the voice actors and stuff, where they're yeah. you know the the SAG Afro stuff just came out today. Where I was like, hey, we talked to some <laughs> right. very important people in the industry, and they they okayed this, and everybody's like, the fuck we did! <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm very very interested to see who who uh, is it's just Troy Baker. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did you ask Troy oh, Baker? God, Troy Baker's was... like, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, you should do it. You should do it. <laughs> Troy's like, yeah, you should go for it. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I'm a storyteller, guys. Yeah, AI's my nickname. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I lo- Troy's a friend of mine. I love Troy. I'm, 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 I'm only making fun of him because I just think that he's a very, very pure individual, and he will probably just agree just to be nice, you know. So. That's what I'm saying. It felt like he kind of got roped into that, and he like some yeah. guys came up and like, "Hey, man, we got this cool thing going on. It's going to replace, you know, it's going to really up the voice acting." He's probably like, "Yeah, man, cool, yeah." You know, just it, yeah. it felt bad kind of seeing that he was kind of propped up and took the fall for all of that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, it looks like Cynthia is raising her hand. Can we can we let her in for a moment? Yeah. I can get some Cynthia in here. I got the master recording going if she says anything. Heck yeah. Let us know if you get your mic working. We'll we'll get you in here. Okay. Bye, Cynthia. You are you are live if you do say stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Episode one hundred, surprise guest. Yeah. <laughs> Cynthia <laughs> dropped in. That kind of segues into one topic I wanted to discuss with you, not to not to derail your our Metal Gear circle jerking here. But um <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, you know, you are a writer for the Washington Post and, mm-hmm. you know, it, I guess, oh God, how am I even going to try to frame this question? I'm trying to frame it without being insensitive, but what was it like just covering a year like 2023? 
I mean, it was such a fucking roller coaster. It was, it was like we had just discussed maybe like 40 minutes ago, you know, such an interesting experience as a gamer, you know, having these awesome games and experiences while from the industry perspective and the industry side, it's just fucking tragic. Like, yeah. I mean, and, and, and it's just imploding. Yeah. The layoffs and the buyouts and shit. Yeah. It was just, it was all over. Full disclosure, yeah. I'm manic depressive. I, you know, got to see the impacts of it in my own sector. And it's like how, like, I can't even imagine having to, like, see it on your day to day, like that, that being your job. Like, what is it like sort of interacting and being so close to something that's been so impactful? I think it's interesting. One, I, I don't really cover a lot of the business end of uh, of the games industry. I, I am in the feature section, but... That, Sorry, I, I understand. Sorry. Right? <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I just want to clarify for folks. Um, so, you know, I, again, I have a, I have the, the the privilege to be able to not really cover that. Although I did want to, I, I did want to write a column uh, addressing, you know, uh, twenty, it, 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 which is now an old viewpoint, which is oh, 23, 2023 was so great, but look at look at what happened to the industry. Um, in terms of my empathy for the industry, obviously, I have a huge, I, I, I my empathy. Part of part of the reason why I, 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 I'm not freaking out over it is because I have so much empathy. Because the Washington Post literally just lost 240 people um, on yeah. December 31st, mm-hmm. um, where where uh, we had to have buyouts. Uh, otherwise, we we face the threat of layoffs uh, this month. Mm. You know. Yeah, and that's right after you guys had the strikes too. I mean, it's just you know. Well, the, the, so the strikes were actually for a contract, uh, mm. and and the the strikes the strike actually worked. We actually got got a pretty decent contract out of it. You know, great, awesome, um, which is nice. But uh, so that was more more focused on a contract and helping people who whoever's left, which is still a lot of people. We still have about 940, 940 journalists uh, in the Washington Post newsroom, plenty of people. Um, but what was it like to see all that? Yeah, it's very depressing, and and I. I guess part of it is I'm I was I'm still continuing to be confused as to why the games industry is doing this uh, and, and seeing more layoffs and even like the the media industry, which is and, yeah. and the media industry is like a lot poorer and worse off and like has like no fans and no money. Uh, but then yet the video game industry feels like that they need they need to start cutting people off because oh my god like our the, the quarters are gone the, the quarter the, this quarter was bad and now we gotta like you know lose money when it's like okay the Washington Post is gonna lo- lost a hundred million dollars in in twenty twenty three was yeah. it really that bad for you as a game company you know. I don't. I don't understand. Is it, is it just that that growth mindset, or those situations where, like, oh my god, we acquired like five different developers, and we mm-hmm. have no fucking idea what to do with them, and <laughs> yeah, we need to cut headcount. Oh god, yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, that has been the most frustrating shit. Yeah. So then, like, these game studios are just are just toys that the amiibos that are being collected by 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 the rich or the you know the, these equity uh, 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 industries to just do whatever because it's just, just a hot thing to do, right? Um, and then they, they don't realize how hard and expensive it is to make a video game. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. You can't just throw money at it and be like, all right, great. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just make it. a Harry Potter game and we'll promote it, you know? Yeah. It's fine. Uh, but I don't know. That, yeah, so, yeah, it's just, I guess what I thought when it happened was, well, there goes my uh, my exit strategy because I was actually hoping to to enter the game industry, you know, because I want, I've been, I've been thinking about leaving journalism for the last 20 years. <laughs> Yeah. Oh whoa. And, and I and I did successfully do that in 2013. Uh, I was. It's funny that we bring uh, we talk about it because I was just thinking about uh, when I resigned from journalism in 2013, only to uh, well 2012, and I got I got pulled back in 2013 because I had a good job, but yeah, I, I, you know, and again, I, you know, uh, our video game section all got laid off in in January last year, so that was very disheartening. I got soup. I'm still super pissed about it. And management knows uh, how pissed I am to to leave me alone to cover. I'm very grateful that I'm, I'm the sole survivor of the whole project. Yeah. But I wish it wasn't because I had a lot of things planned uh, for us, and now it's all, just all gone. So I have been, you know, the bitterness of that experience and the instability of the just the media, the news media industry in general has has always made me want to find an exit strategy. It's like I should just work in games. I love ga- video games and. Video games are a healthy industry, aren't they? I should find a job. And yeah, what's the worst part, guys, is that uh, one person who actually uh, offered me a job was uh, the uh, executive at Bungie. Um, mm. Oh, Bungie was like, "You should come work with us, man. You're great, and 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 we're doing great." You know, <laughs> and, 
man. And then I was like, oh, I thought about it. I thought about it. I was like, you know what? Maybe that could be fun. I love Bungie. Destiny's okay, you know. Uh, but I could, I could, I could. If Bungie's doing that well, then that'd be great. What a safe spot that would be for me to hide out in Bungie, yeah. a video game company oh, that make, probably no. make a lot of money. Uh, and then all that stuff happened. And the person who got the job that I was that I, that that we were talking about also got laid off. She yeah. got let go. You know, because it was it, it was going to be in a community side, uh, uh, portion of the company, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, well, so much for yeah. for my exit strategy. I mean, there's still safer places to be, maybe. So if, I guess if there's any video game executives that that want to hire a, a, a well known comms person, uh, uh, I, I might be interested in talking. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it just made me realize, okay, well, again, maybe I'll I will stay at the Washington Post, and yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. I used to want to be something, you know, music wise or, you know, sound wise in, in the video game industry. But just after seeing some of the, the stories with just, you know, certain composers and stuff, just how they kind of mm-hmm. get thrown around and stuff. I'm just like, ah, no, thanks. Like, I, I don't know. I just don't know if I'd want to go into that sector now, like professionally. It's just right now. Stability is kind of everything. Yeah, I'm good where I'm at. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and it's funny to, for me to say that stability, I might have stability in the Washington Post uh, because I did have stability in the Washington Post. The, for, for, for journalism uh, professionals, uh, the Washington Post is among the, the quote-unquote Valhalla of the, of the news industry. If mm-hmm. you work at the New York Times, the Washington Post, or the Wall Street Journal, you're fine. You're good. Um, and uh, this past year kind of uh, upended that, that, that knowledge, you know. Um, but at the same time, it's still the Washington Post, and we are still owned by the the, the former richest person, and it's still the second richest person on the planet. Um, of course, you don't become that rich by being generous. So <laughs> there is that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess I'll stay. Like I still haven't been laid off. Uh, yeah, they still want to keep me, and as far as I know, I'm still pretty very well respected and well liked at the Washington Post, and you know, so. I, I don't know if I want to try to reestablish myself in another company again, you know? Yeah. Gosh, again, you know, I was trying my best not to be insensitive. I hope I didn't come off that way. And I no, really no, no, appreciate no. your not. candidness about all no. of this. So No, absolutely not. You know, I, 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 you know, the New York Times would be a, a, a good fit. And I've applied to the New York Times before. And, you know, the, jo- the, the, the jobs just weren't good for me. And I wasn't good for, 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 for them. But, you know, I, I, the, the, the further I go, I'm like... Do I really want to work at the New York Times? I don't know. <laughs> so it looks like Cynthia. Not to, not to. Uh, yeah. Hey. Hey, Cynthia. Hey. Hey, everybody. How are you? Good evening. Doing good. Doing good. I Hi. just want in to say, Happy New Year. Love you guys. Hope to see you next week. And I kind of agree with Jean. You know you. Mm-hmm. Step out of one realm of your your profession, and then something else pulls you back in. Mm-hmm. And I get feeling too that that's what's going on with me right now. I'm retired, mm-hmm. but it's pulling me. The gaming world is pulling me back in, and I'm enjoying <laughs> every bit of it. I love to hear that, Cynthia, and it's so good to hear your voice. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Cynthia. What an honor to Thank have you, you so on, on episode 100. You just popping in on us like that. We we really appreciate that. We love you. And uh, Cynthia, you're the auntie I needed in this fandom. I'll be honest. I try to sneak in in the bushes every once in a while, but I don't know if you guys can see me or not. And I just listen. <laughs> every time I see your name, it just puts a smile on my face. You're you're out there like a tree frog, Cynthia. We see you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And hopefully you'll ever be there next week. I'll see you next week. I know I'll see, see you next Dave. week. See you. I I'll see you next how week. I'm, I'm feeling better now, but I, I can't make it uh, to MAGFest this year, but uh, maybe next year. And maybe I'll see you. Yeah, I can't make it either. I'll see you at MGS Con. Oh, you're going to MAGFest. I, maybe I'll go too. Are you going? Yeah. Jean, I, I wanted to ask if you were going to MAGFest because, I mean, it is in your neighborhood. It is. I don't have tickets, so I don't know how late I am. Uh, you but... kind of need to hurry up because on the Discord, sure. they're saying, like, it's probably going to sell out. It's 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 getting gangbusters. It's exceeding 2020, which was the highest mm, year. So mm, mm. we would love and to I hang with you. Say, too. I'm Gene Park. Let me in. <laughs> What's going on? Why is it, why is it doing that? It's just, I, I'm assuming because this is the first year that they have kind of 
a little bit oh, deep since break. COVID. Yeah, since, since since COVID and also they've been a little lax on COVID rules as well. And I think, you know, just the general consensus is like people just want to kind of get out there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so And because you're yeah. there, Cynthia. I mean, that's not a thing. Yeah, know, that's a thing that we and, and I'll be honest, yeah. No, it's Cynthia. That's that, not true. That's <laughs> absolutely true, Cynthia. The guest <laughs> list this year has been phenomenal as well. Um, Are you kidding me? One thing I was going to note is that Marty O'Donnell's going to be there. And like, I, mm-hmm. if things hadn't gone the way they gone, I would have brought my Bungie stuff, like my Halo copies and my Destiny 2 soundtrack because mm-hmm. that Queen's Walk theme, man, so good. But, um, you know, with everything happening, you know, it just feels really insensitive to try to get Marty O'Donnell to sign, you know, Destiny stuff. So. Mm. But in any case, not trying to damper the mood, like for those who don't know, myself, um, Apache, Cynthia, um, and hopefully Jean um, will be attending the Music and Gaming Festival um, that will be starting on January 17th. Um, Mm -hmm. 17th or the 18th? I know I get there on the 18th. I get there on the 17th. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. That's some Daisy Uh, Rose stuff. Yeah. 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 uh, It's... um, it's the January 18th to the 21st. Um, we're going to be there. We're going to be hanging out. We're going to be at the Gaylord. Um, we Apache has two runs at MAGFAST, the speedrunning event. He is going to be running um, running Metal Gear Solid 3 and Resident Evil 2 Remake. I'm shocked. <laughs> what are you running, Apache? Um, Metal Gear Solid 3 and Resident Evil 2. The whole day? Just a Saturday night. It's like an hour or something, probably. That's all it needs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but he does that, too. What time? It's half past eight, and the first run starts, and then the the last run finishes at 11 p.m., so between half eight and 11. Do me a favor. Um, DM me either on X or Instagram, and let me know what time you're going to be do that, doing that, I'll, so I'll make I'll sure send- I'm in the area. I'll send it over to you now. I'm right now. I, I stopped. I am literally a couple hours ago. I finished or stopped just to rest because I didn't want it to be over of beating the boss. And it was coming to the point where I'm, I was about to take her out. And it's like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I stopped it. So, but I'm going to go back in on a different level. So, but I'd love to come and see your run, Apache. Yeah, I can't wait to see you there. I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to see you there. Yeah, just hanging out <laughs> is going to be a blast. That's that's the. Fun I can't part of my- wait to get there. I really can't. Exciting, yeah. So I just sent off a email to Megfest to see if I can get press access. So we'll yes, see. thank you, Gene. Oh, please. That would be cool. Um, Worst comes worst. I'm down to just hang, to come down and hang out. Just get go grab a coffee. I don't even have to attend the the, the festival, but we can all just hang out. So that could be fun. One million percent down. I just wanted to say good night and um see you guys and thank you from the bottom of my heart from all the support that I get from all of you all every single day. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Cynthia. I, I'm so excited to see you, Cynthia. Let, let's let's make this happen. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you so oh, much. Okay. Talk to you soon. Now, how do I turn right. this Goodnight, off? Good night, Cynthia. <laughs> good night, Cynthia. Good night. Good night. Bye, Cynthia. <laughs> you know, just uh, that's Cynthia dropping in. You know, awesome. I can't stop smiling. That's the podcast auntie. You know, we just we got to let her in. You know, mm-hmm. it's just <laughs> grinning ear to ear. Yeah. Ooh, Kaiji Tang is going to be there too. The voice of uh, the voice of Ichiban Kasuga in the Like a Dragon. Okay, I definitely want to meet him then. <laughs> Did you have any thoughts on um on Delta? Oh, good question. Oh. <laughs> Here wow. we go. Oh my goodness. Um I reserve <laughs> saying too much until I actually play it, I guess, because I don't know. I I saw the engine uh gameplay and it looks kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Right? I I was like I I could that could be fun, you know? Um I don't like that they called it Delta. Uh, I don't like I don't know. Uh, I, I, the jury's out. Hot take. I actually liked Metal Gear Survive. <laughs> so. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm the one Survive fan in this group. I mean, you know, they, they can all tolerate it, I guess. But I, yeah. I am okay with it. It's better than MGSV. 
I had a great time with Survive just from a from a gameplay perspective. Like, you know, Let's story go. shit, it's a B movie, but hey, that was some fun multiplayer, you know. Yeah. The story is absolutely horrible. Yeah. Uh, Who but cares? Uh, <laughs> Once you remove, because I played Survive like two years or three years after it came out, because I bought mm. that thing for like five bucks, right? Yeah. Uh, but I don't really consider the price or anything like that. But when I played it, I was like, "This is Animal Crossing on Metal Gear." What? I was like, "I was like, this is an awesome. This is oh, that's a comparison I haven't heard." I was like, "This is just like I'm just building my island, yeah, with, 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 in the Fox Engine, <laughs> and then we're just going out and then finding the zombies. Like it, uh, it, it's it starts so slow. I, I, I don't I don't want to turn this into a Metal Gear Survive cast, but, sure, sure, yeah. Uh, just to say that my bar for Metal Gear games is fairly low." Mm-hmm. So I, I I could easily see myself enjoying Delta, but I guess philosophically and spiritually, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Sure. Um, right. And I I don't think I don't think Snake look or Big Boss or whatever. Who I don't think John looks good. I think he looks pretty terrible to me. So. <laughs> I think you know environment wise, other than like the the tone, you know, like the the quote unquote piss filter look, you know, just to say a word uh mm-hmm. you know I, th- I think it, it looks visually you know interesting uh not interesting i don't know i think i think they're doing a good job with like the photorealism aspect of it like everything looks yeah good and up to date it's like oh okay that's what that looks like that's the art direction they're going for but we are mm-hmm. lacking some of like the, the stylization of the original there for sure for sure it's and- very hire this man you know yeah yeah and then so look if they do actually do something with some of the levels and make them more interesting or open them up, and if we if we actually get Fox Engine, MGS5, MGS Survive style gameplay in MGS3, I'd be pretty happy, to be quite honest. So see that is is the I would be physically ill <laughs> if they do that, but I think that you're gonna get your wish because I think that's that's what it looks like they're doing from the little bit that we've seen. That's what it looks like they're doing. Yeah, well, because I feel like that's the the the, the lowest common den- the like common yeah, denominator sure. thing. Yeah, do. just make it a modern game, which yeah. is which is fine, which I'm fine with. But I'm interested to see why why you would hate that. Well, this this man runs the games like literally blindfolded. Uh, Speed runs them blindfolded, so he's just super familiar with you know the mechanics of the old ones. And I, I think just mm. you know modern games aren't really where it's at. For, okay, for yeah. I don't want to speak for you, Apache, but go, I don't go ahead. think that's the point at all. I I, I think. Um, all of Metal Gear Solid 3's gameplay is very purposeful. Um, mm. it, it, it grants a lot of player freedom through... Um, every, you imagine every single room is like a set piece. Every single room mm. is like a playground, and it's a mm-hmm. series of connected playgrounds. And there's mm-hmm. so much to do in that game, and it makes the skill ceiling of the game really high while also making it very accessible. Mm. Uh, or, or not so much, I guess, in the modern day. It's a little bit less accessible. It's a little bit fiddly for a newer player but like once you once you get it it's a very fun game that's very replayable and you can do so much uh, in every single room in that game metal Gear solid 5's gameplay is dull it it's it's so dull and it, it it loses something um you kind of play every fight in a very similar fashion the 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 guns are like they don't they don't feel good to play with uh, like i'm not a fan of Metal Gear Solid 5 at all i don't like the game mm. i'll just say uh hard disagree but that's just you know that's what i'm saying like feel wise like i prefer mgsv over three like you know three feels a little clunky to me to, mm. like the aiming and stuff but it's kind of like what you're used to and what you acclimate to i guess like i don't know if, if i may if i may go ahead let's come at this from another angle i'll, t- I'll tell you why i'm a little worried about delta um I, I assume you've played the Twin Snakes. Yeah, of course. One of the the commonly discussed problems with the game is that when you shove MGS2 mechanics into MGS1 yep. level design, it breaks it, yep. right? Yep, yep. Well, Five, Five's gameplay will break three for sure. Yeah, if I can quick dive it behind a log, it's game over. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I think it goes a little further than that. Um because MGS3 was already breaking. And I've, I've talked about this before, so I'll try and summarize it. But with, with MGS3, that series was already sort of having growing pains with its existing camera system. Mm. And so that's why the subsistence 3D camera was, was put into place, because mm. with the larger outdoor environments, it made situational awareness really difficult at times. You know, you could kind of pan the camera around and lock it in place to get around that. But there were a lot of times where if you wanted to know what was happening, you had to drop into first person view and look around and it kind of messed with the pacing. And plus, Mm -hmm. you had the survival Mm -hmm. viewer, which also messed with the pacing. So they're like, "Okay, we got to speed this up. 
throw in the 3D camera, really modernize it. And it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. The the, the trade off there is that it kind of made the game a bit easier because Mm -hmm. those environments were not designed for a 3D camera. Yeah. So especially that house, that 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 great house. Yeah. Yeah. Take it a step further. I don't know if you've played the 3DS version. Mm-hmm. Um, the 3DS version kind of makes that problem worse because now you're, you've added over-the-shoulder aiming and crouch mm-hmm. walking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Peace Walker now, right? Yeah, exactly. So, which, is, which is basically 5, you know? Right. And, and the reason 5 sort of works, I know Apache you disagree on this, but, but when you've got a wide-open world, that is more fitting for those kinds of mechanics. I think you'd agree yeah. on that at least. Um, you know, Ground Zero shows that. Um, yeah, you, you have to design the, the environments around the mechanics. You can't sort of just keep hop, you know, playing hopscotch with it. What a great example of those mechanics in ground zeros. So like, ho- like, yeah, that worked so well with, with that map. And just exactly, you know, exactly. even with all those abilities, you were like, fuck, you know, it, it was a very evasive, you know, game you were playing the whole time. Yeah. You were constantly yeah. on edge. Exactly. My point the, 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 to, to be able to design the game around those mechanics. So mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm definitely not suggesting, well, I, I do think that, Placing five mechanics onto three without changing almost anything and just give, just giving us those maps would absolutely be another Twin Snakes problem. Yeah, where yeah. it's just like so this game is just not the same game, and it just that seems like that's what they're doing. And and just just by comparing environments, it looks one to one. And the mm-hmm. only way I can think of that they might be able to get around this, some of this is if they made you know they got rid of area transitions they they made you know guard routes mm. persistent through areas they made the survival viewer real time which survive had uh, little changes like that might offset it but you know there it's going to be weird like i wish they'd go crazy with it i think mgs3 is too tight to make that many sweeping changes and and miraculously arrive at a a solid new game like sure. you can't, you can't just remove. I and, agree. And and Gene, I mis- I misunderstood what you meant before, and I, I totally agree with what uh, Nitro is saying, and and I agree with what you're saying. Like, do something different. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna lean into those MGS five mechanics, like, sure, I'm down for it, but don't just try and input them into yeah. Metal Gear Solid 3's gameplay. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. Yeah, that's such a cynical approach. Uh, yeah, I don't want that either. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like the only section of MGS three that might be okay for the most part, is Grazi Grad, right? Maybe. Maybe. If, sorry, if you put the MGS5 mechanics into Grozny Grad, I, I, I think, like, the biggest problem with Grozny Grad is that you don't you do not do enough there. It's like, it's got yeah. so many areas that are just like, once you know where you're going and what you're doing, you don't actually have to access them in any way. Mm. Right, it's not about navigation. It's about what you're actually doing there because navigation's fine. A lot of the MG, I think there there are some MGS three areas in in MGO two that are just fine, you know. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, I t- totally agree that that we might be facing another twin stick situation here with Metal Gear Delta, mm. basically. Yeah. So that's why I'm not like super hype about it because if I wanted to, like, if I really wanted to play Fire's gameplay and I do, I will, I'll play Five and I am, you know. Yeah. It will be interesting to see if they if they do reinterpret places like you know Grazi Grad or like the Granini Gorky South or something you know <laughs> whatever. If, I'm probably mispronouncing it, but you know you, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if they went nuts with it and made something like okay, well now the end is is more persistent through like just they went completely wild with the concept. Now the end tracks you through the whole game. I I always thought like as soon as you leave um the warehouse after getting the key from Granin. If like the battle with the end started there, yeah, like, that oh, that would be man. so interesting. That'd be sick. I was thinking maybe some sort of like RE one remake shit, like they had with Forest, like one explosive zombie or whatever. That same concept, but with the end. But mm. please make it toggleable. I do not want to deal with that. The end is a stalker type. Yeah, the the end is a Mister X type. <laughs> yeah, you got Skullface to worry about. He's just like in the background. You're like, Dude, what the fuck? Skullface is in the background, just cleaning shit he up. Keeps, you know? Right, you turn around, he keeps peeking around the trees. <laughs> yeah, he's picking up your cigarettes. <laughs> Yo, this is so weird. Episode 100, Nitroid acting a little hyped about Delta. Is this kind of strange? No, you? I'm yeah. I'm hyped about what it could be. Yo, we said nice things about MGS4 earlier. Like, yeah, we I'm need trying to appreciate to... how far we've come here. You know. Hey. Okay, 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 look, look. I'm trying, my New Year's resolution is I'm trying to mm. dial down my negativity a bit. So, right. you're, doing so you're doing great, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> but yeah, those, those are my thoughts on Delta. I'm very confused, you know, but uh, 
I, I'll be there day one. Yeah. No problem. So. Yep. That's that's where they yeah. got us all. We're like, God damn yeah, it. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there day one. No, <laughs> <laughs> no questions about it. So don't worry about Fine, it. Fine. I'll buy your goddamn game. I just want Acid 3. <laughs> You'll never get it. I know. I want Ghost Babble 2. Or I want Ghost Babble, period. So. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, we wanted to talk to you about like the non-canon games and the MSX titles and stuff. But you, you like all those? <laughs> I actually never played the MSX title until the Master Collection. How well do you feel they uh, they exist in the modern day? I personally think they hold up insanely well. <laughs> it's, it's pretty tough. I, I had to look up guides for it. So oh, yeah, definitely like, use a guide for it. Like only oh, one's yeah. fucking solid uh, in that respect. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, I have no idea what I'm going. I'm just gonna look up, look up a guide for it. I looked up a guide for it. I was like, okay, well, I'm glad I looked up the guide for it. So. Yeah, that's the way to play that game. I mean, it's, it's yeah. definitely not. Yeah, you gotta play. I, I feel like you gotta play that that game. The game, game's way just way too outdated. I don't like to to use the term outdated. But if it if your if your game is like Castlevania Two Simon's Quest, then yeah, it's on. Yeah, how the hell was I supposed to know to go over there and duck for thirty seconds? Like what? The exactly. Fuck? Like, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those level games where you're like the the, the classic a, the classic AVGN rant, right? But yeah, <laughs> making a whole map for the whole section, you know, and trying to figure it out that way, and just writing down tips. But you know, it's it's of that era, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can I can easily imagine how confusing Metal Gear uh, was was back then too. So I have, I still haven't played uh, Part Two yet, so. Oh man, two is where it's, it's so at. Good. Two is it's so good. I, it's good. Two, I hear is yeah. I hear two is is re- actually where, where 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 things get good. So I'll be sitting there going, "Oh, Metal Gear Solid One. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Like that's that's yeah. basically what you do the whole time you're playing Metal Gear Two Solid yeah. Snake. Like you're just like, I get Metal Gear Solid exactly, and 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 it, and it's the real big boss, you know. Yep. So it's, it's one of the best games mm-hmm. in the series. That and Metal Gear Solid One, I think, is uh, that's my personal favorite, but. But yeah, I did play Poops and I played Ghost Babble. I didn't play Acid, but my sister did. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, Rising? Of course, Rising. Yeah, I love Rising. Oh my God, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, R- I mean, Rising is the whole reason why I started worshiping Platinum in the first place. Because, you know, like they, <laughs> they felt... But remember back then when they were like the saviors of the project where, where, where Kojima Productions like, were, were like carted out in front of a camera? Yeah. Uh, and being like, we failed at this project. We couldn't figure it out. You know? <laughs> and then it, it all ends with Kojima says, "Yes, this was very disappointing." <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'll I'll never forget that um that E three uh, technical demo for Ryzen. Yeah, that looked insane. I want that game. That that demo made me feel uncomfortable. The way that they cut. I know I've said it before, but like the way that Raiden was cutting through soldiers like butter, just. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know something about that it just it got i don't gore doesn't really get me that bad but that got me it, like they just drop mm, that's interesting it is gross it, it, yeah it, there there is some, for something very gross and dehumanizing about it but i did like yeah. his combo strings you know oh it was amazing looking yeah and then and then like the the final version like it's it's more it's the same but it's more comical i don't know how to explain it it's more exaggerated yeah well there's always armstrong Who's better than all the beltweight pansies out here? So <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, it's the grindhouse Metal Gear. Yeah, oh, dude, I, I I couldn't I could when Armstrong showed up I couldn't I, I was like I can't believe Metal Gear is still surprising me after all these years <laughs> with with this crazy bad guy and the the crazy dialogue and when he says I have a dream oh my god dude <laughs> the uh, last thing I'll say uh, just like the memes for Rising are so strong that mm-hmm. my kids found out about the game from the memes and not from me. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. It's a beautiful thing. That, that, that's, that, that's the memes, you know? Actually, uh, that, that's uh, my Twitter banner uh, is actually from Metal Gear Rising. You guys go check it out. But it's uh, when, uh, what's his face? Typhoon says, memes, the DNA of the soul. <laughs> 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 that's my favorite line of that game. God, I love rice. And now that now that we've had this conversation, I feel like it's going to have a lot more deeper meaning every time I see it, <laughs> or at least as your ban in the context of your banner. <laughs> exactly, it, it, it hits hard. You know, it, it is a DNA of the soul. I, when I saw that, I was like, bars. You know, the gif of like the guy <laughs> writing, the guy writing with and the, and the pen the and it's on, on fire. fire. I was yeah. like, that's a bar right there. I've never heard anything that cool before. That's so cool. I love Kojima's writing. <laughs> you want to hear a fun piece of trivia about MGS two? Yeah. The word meme is not said once in the entire game. Oh, that's right. Not once. Wait. Yeah, it's not. 
it was in the it was in the marketing though. Yep, that's it's how only you do in it. The marketing, yeah. Which is what? Which is I forget who said that, but that's the Kojima experience. It it goes from, I think Daisy Head said that where it, it goes from the marketing, the commercials, to the hype, mm-hmm, to the opening mm-hmm. credits, to the gameplay, to sh- to showing the fake trailers in game to make a point about the fake trailers. <laughs> <laughs> to make yeah, to make a point about the fake trailers in the in the in the real game, you know. <laughs> Um, I also didn't notice, uh, Joaquin, uh, the, the fake guy that, that he made for MGS5 promoting. I never noticed that it was actually Jeff Keighley doing the interview. I was like, that, that piece of shit was in on it the whole time. Jeff Keighley. Yeah. Yep. I also know Jeff, so I can call him a piece of shit. It's fine. <laughs> oh my God. That, okay. Funny story about that, sh- Jeff. I always say this to people who know Jeff and I hate yeah. this story personally, but I have to tell it to people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if you knew, he, like, I don't know if you remember, he used to have that show on Spike TV, Gamehead, mm-hmm. and there was that episode where he, like, bowled against Reggie and they both had bowling shirts. <laughs> it's <laughs> the deepest of cuts. I don't think anybody remembers this. Like, the only sure. proof of it is a tweet literally by Jeff. Anyways, the reason I say all this is because there was a competition to win Reggie fils shirt, right? Mm. And like Reggie was cool at the time, but I wasn't really fucking with the Wii. Mm. But what I was fucking with was the final hours of Metal Gear Solid 2 article mm. on GameSpot. Mm-hmm. So I asked Spike TV, I was like, can I have Jeff's shirt signed instead? And he, they gave it to me and it's signed. And I actually, when I went to home for the holidays, I found it in my parents' closet. And I was like, I'm taking this back with me. Oh my God, um, dude. You have a, you have a, sh- your Metal Gear fandom is so strong that you have a shirt worn by Jeffrey Keeley. Yes. It is really <laughs> weird experience. Kojima's best white friend. You're such yeah. a fucking nerd. You're such a nerd. Any- fucking he i remember back in the day like i know he he brought that story up in podcasts and shit like that and it was so like uh i I don't know but anyways jeff if you're out there i still have your shirt i don't know if you want it back but i kind of want to keep it (laughs) i'll I'll, I'll bring that up the next time i see him i I might actually see him later this month actually so all right gene well we appreciate your time man if uh if you want to plug where people can find you on social media and stuff and Go ahead with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plug. Uh, I'm at Gene Park in Instagram. I'm actually trying to get follow me on Instagram. I'm actually trying to get to ten thousand followers. I've been in nine thousand followers for like the last like five years, and it's very irritating. I don't use Instagram <laughs> quite a bit, but maybe I'll start using it once I hit ten thousand followers. <laughs> um, obviously, many people know me on Twitter. Uh, I'm actually gonna try to start streaming again. Um, you know, I just got a clean bill of health. Uh, I, I and I also just, just got informed by, by my doctors today that I don't have to do chemotherapy, which is a huge relief. Yay! If, if, if Congratulations, is remotely man. familiar with chemotherapy, uh, you would understand how disruptive that is to a, a human being doing anything possible. So yeah. it's very nice to hear that. So I definitely want to start kind of streaming more and creating more videos. I will be streaming Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth DLDs uh, on January 27th. Uh, if you don't know, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth takes place in Honolulu, Hawaii, which is, I bas- I'm not from there, but I basically claim Hawaii as my home now because that's where my mom lives. Um, but I lived in Honolulu, Hawaii for eight years. So it'll be a nice, cozy stream. I'm not going to be playing the game, uh, so you don't have to worry about spoilers. I'm just going to be walking around in Honolulu and telling you life stories about my life in Hawaii and whether that's actually accurate to what we see in the game, and you would be you would be surprised at the amount of stories that I can actually pair with what happens in Yuck, in Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Um, I'm really really excited for that stream, and I'm hoping to get some some fun guests. Uh, maybe I'll say I'm I'm, I'm trying to get Daniel Day Kim on, on my stream. Uh, Daniel Day Kim is one of the voice is a Hollywood tal- actor and he's also one of the the talents the voice talents for Infinite Wealth and he happens also happens to be a friend of mine and he was also Doctor Han in the, the the show The Good Doctor which went viral last summer so but yeah Twitch TV slash Gene Park he was that guy friend of me <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I'm only trying to do this so I can yell at at Daniel I am a dragon Doctor Han. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yes, and he's also Johnny Gat in this in the Saint, Saints Row games too. Johnny Gat, a shell of Johnny Gat. <laughs> thank you so much, you guys, for having me. I, I'm super glad. Uh, I 
this was so much fun to just nerd out on Kojima stuff. You know, uh, obviously we could talk about this for days and, and you guys have for years. So <laughs> keep it up. Uh, lo- new fan, but <laughs> but I'm going to be a consistent fan from now on. So. Thank you so much, man. We really appreciate it. Let's go. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Thank you so much. Yeah, this has been awesome.